For my master's research, I spent three months here in Sarajevo, where I interviewed Bosnian Muslim women who were a victim of ethnic rape during the Bosnian war, war in the early 1990s. This paper presentation will therefore focus on the ethnographic fieldwork that I conducted on the aftermath of sexual violence, and more specifically, on the relationship between victims and their sense of belonging to each other uh, in a post-conflict setting. Due to the established, uh, established contextual knowledge of this conference, I feel no need to introduce the complex multi-ethnic structure of Bosnia together with the outbreak of the war. I will therefore begin with my own more specific research topic. The systematic rapes of, of uh, Bosnian Muslim women by Serb men during the conflict are, among others, seen as a way to change the Bosnian Muslim population into a Serb one. A Serb one. Here, rape is used as an instrument of ethnic cleansing, even though these rapes would not necessarily resolve into pregnancies or even if the children conceived through these acts of uh, sexual violence would not necessarily be 100% Serb. Uh, raping Bosnian Muslim women was still considered a way to regain some kind of Serb pride. I use the word regain because populist national narratives of ethnic Orthodox Christian Serbs tell the story of a pride loss decades ago to the Islamic Ottomans and during the Bosnian war it was propagated that the Bosnian Muslims were the symbolic representations of these Ottomans. One of the questions that interests me most was why women were the target of regaining some kind of collective pride. When looking at ethnic groups, ways of behaving for both women and men often lie at the core of ethnic structures. Uh, moreover, the sexual demeanor of members of an ethnic group plays an important role in the honor and respectability of the ethnic community as a whole. And due to this sexualization of ethnic structures, the most powerful image to justify performing violence is that of the rape of women from the own ethnic group. And this is exactly the image that was propagated by Serb nationalist populists to the larger public. Furthermore, it is culturally propagated by Serbs through national narratives that women are mothers of the nation and that they have this, uh, this kind of social responsibility to be highly reproductive, which is in favor of the future existence of the ethnic group. This implies a high emphasis on the symbolic meaning of a woman's body. And one can find this symbolic representation back throughout the history of the whole region of former Yugoslavia. Uh, women were mostly looked at through the positions of being a wife or being a mother. And they are the ones who represented the honor of the family, which implements that a woman is also positioned to represent or even cause shame to the whole family. It is believed by the ethnic community that this family honor is protected by watching over the chastity of the woman together with making sure that a woman gets married and stimulating her to conceive children. And following this line of thought, by attacking and raping Bosnian Muslim women during the war, Serb nationalist forces were thus in a significant way attacking the symbolic representation of the ethnic collective identity as a whole and transforming these women into potential symbols of shame. So what happens to these women in the life after sexual violence where supposedly some kind of collective honor has been affected? I ask my informants about this and specifically if they have uh, feelings of shame or if they have feelings of guilt. One of them replied, and I quote, No, no, I have no feelings of guilt, uh, but I am always somehow ashamed that I am that woman, that I am seriously ashamed of, because I know how it was before the war when a woman was raped. She was thought of as poor her or jadna ona. I never want anyone to pity me, I just don't like talking about it, end quote. Wartime rape is aimed at family breakdown, and even though it is not a homicidal act, it is aimed at the whole or partial cultural destruction of a group. Specific to the genocidal intent of wartime rape, as in the Bosnian case, is the harm inflicted not merely on one's body, but also on its victim's social vitality. The rape survivors may become socially dead, which is not necessarily believed to be less extreme than that of a physical death. 
Social debt produ uh, produces uh, meaninglessness to a person's life because social connections and contacts are removed and one becomes isolated. I think it is this social death that my informant is afraid of, as speaking about her rape might cause for actors in her environment to no longer consider her part of the community. This is not very surprising, as uh, it is often thought that rape women in traditional patriarchal families will indeed be stigmatized by their family uh, or community members. This stigmatization uh, has been conceptualized by Todd Salzman, a professor in ethics, uh, as the secondary victimization of rape victims by looking at, among other, religious and cultural responses. Such negative attitudes uh, cause for women to close down and not speak about their sexual assaults, which hampers their ability to heal emotionally, uh, physically, and psychologically. Now, on the one hand, my informants told me that they would rather not speak about the past and that they do not want people to know what had happened to them. Yet, they were all openly associated to an NGO consisting of women who were raped during the war. This NGO, Women Victims of War, Jana uh, Jaltvarata, uh, and the women themselves are often in the media. So there is some case of public openness about their past when with the NGO. This relationship between survivors of sexual violence is not a self-evident one, as these women did not necessarily have a connection with one another in a pre-war context. It is the shared experience of becoming a victim of ethnic rape that makes the post-conflict lives of these women somewhat simi similar, and the NGO enables the special contact between victims. For my analysis, I consulted a feminist helping model for survivors of trauma, which emphasizes the strength of the victims and the need for practitioners to understand the meaning of violence through the perspective of this victim. Additionally, feminist models are also empowering as they prompt for an active role from victims in the process of helping. I therefore ask myself, what better social workers to fit this feminist model than women who themselves have experienced sexual violence and who also share the cultural context of the victims? Throughout the territory of uh, former Yugoslavia, including Bosnia, various women's group, groups emerged with the goal to empower women and to ch challenge gender-based suffering caused by the patriarchal structure of their societies. It has been documented that within the NGO sector in post-war Bosnia, women have been amongst the most active leaders. Keeping this in mind, the women from the NGO they might be victims and survivors, uh, they might be traumatized themselves, but I believe that they are also capable of offering significant help to fellow victims. This is interesting, while it is often thought that survivors would be too traumatized to help or that even other women who have been raped do not encourage peers to talk about the violence as they are also afraid uh, that they will be stigmatized by their families or communities while offering help to these other women. The empowering influence and strength of the relationship between victims became most clear to me during a memorial I visited together with the NGO to uh, Visegrad. This event illustrates how women who are sexually violated come together with peers in order to remember what they had been through. And also, although it was an intense experience, the women would come together for several memorials each year. Uh, there were there were almost no other relatives or husbands of the woman during this trip. It was specifically an event organized by, and maybe even for, women who were victims of sexual violence. For me, the sinister tone of the woman regarding the events during the war was most striking. For example, once we entered Republika Srpska, a police car with Serbian policemen started escorting our bus. This is noteworthy as we did not have any police escorting us during our ride through the Federation of Bosnia. One of the officers stopped the bus near the restaurant where we were heading for a break and he told Meliha and Amala, two women from the NGO, that he would let the, them know when we, were, when we would be able to continue our trip. Um, this seems as a small act, but it caused for agitation amongst the woman and the bus, the woman in the bus, and one of them reacted loudly and very cynically, and I quote, they could have raped us, they could have burned us, how, now, how nice of them to let us go on, end quote. 
In a way, they were revenging the past with these small acts, and even though the policemen did not hear the woman say what they said on the bus, by speaking up and expressing the grudges they held against the men who raped them in front of other raped women, they were somehow getting back a sense of control which they had been deprived from during the war. I believe that the reason these ways of acting were possible in the first place uh, is an intense feeling of strength developed and caused by other raped women. They were no longer afraid of the Serb men who raped them in the aftermath of sexual violence embodied in the present by the police officers. The other women were able to offer support for one another, as, as one of my informants told me, and I quote, uh, you feel more secure. They cannot do anything to us because there are so many of us. We are all the same here, simply all the same. We have that same kind of problem within us and we mutually understand each other. It is different when you did not go through the same and when I tell you I have a problem." End quote. Being surrounded by other victims or at least being in contact with those who have been through the same could be considered a significant factor to the path of recovery for the rape Bosnian Muslim woman I had the chance of speaking to. Even though they might not fully recover, uh, they, their goal is simply to endure life and to keep on going. Not only do these other victims take away feelings of guilt related to the violence, as my informants often said, when they saw how many of them there were and that, that, were, and that also grandmothers and little girls were being raped, that, that was the moment when they realized and understood that they were not the ones to blame for what had happened. But also, these women offer strength to each other in order to keep moving forward. A strong feeling of belonging is being developed by these women as they perceive each other to be the same and they believe uh, only other victims are able to fully understand them. Now, um, this special sphere of belonging is enabled by the NGO and emerged bec because the women shared the same violent experience from the past and their cultural environment has made it difficult for them to find uh, support from others in the aftermath of sexual, sexual violence. Uh, therefore, I wish to conclude that these women, in my opinion, these women need each other in order to process the past and maybe equally important, in order to remember so that their stories will keep being heard and so that their stories will not be forgotten. Thank you. <laughs>